Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing another FL Studio tutorial, how to remove those really pesky S sounds that seem to creep in whenever you record with a microphone. I'm going to be showing three techniques, but you only need to use one of them. I'm just showing three for a bit of variety. Two of them use stock FL Studio plugins, and the third uses a free third-party plugin. The first is very simply setting up a multiband compressor, which is easier than it sounds, to pick the frequencies where those S sounds are and compress them. The second method is using the Edison to go in and manually remove the S sounds, just that specific frequency range. It takes a little bit longer, but it gives fantastic results. And the third is setting up a dynamic EQ, which again is much easier than it sounds, so that when the S sounds go past a certain level, those frequencies are ducked automatically. So you don't have to use any automations or go in and do any sort of fine editing. So let's just jump right in and see all three of these methods. So I'm inside FL Studio 20, and let's take a listen to the vocal that I want to edit. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. Depending on what you're listening on, those S sounds are just way too loud, kind of blow your ears off, they're really fatiguing, and they just cut through the mix in a bad way. So you can DS at any point in your chain. I know many uh, producers like to do it early on in the effects chain. It's just so that you get rid of a, a bad thing at the start and you're not propagating issues through the rest of your effects. I'm going to very quickly show you where the S frequencies are on this particular vocal. So I have an EQ here. And if you look in this high range from about 5K up, you'll see them and hear them. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see Around here and up. So that's the kind of area that we want to target. Now we can't remove it completely because that'll sound really unnatural. So what I'm going to do is for the first step in my effects chain, I'm going to load the Maximus plugin. On its own, this will make no difference to your sound. So go up here, select a preset and select DSR narrow band. This is a good place to start. So I'm going to make this as simple as I can. All this is is a compressor that's only going to compress a narrow band of frequencies. So it typically has three bands, low, mid, and high. We've turned off the low, turned off the high, and we're just gonna use this yellow mid band. I'm going to turn monitoring on just by pressing this button here, and we're gonna try to see where the frequencies are on this spectrum, I suppose. When I hear that song. You can see that it really lit up from here. So I'm gonna select, I'm gonna just drag the edges of this band and move them. That's just a left click with a mouse. When I hear that song. And I'm just going to try and really hone in. So in this case, it's maybe 5 or 6K and above. When I hear that song, that looks about right. The next thing you need to do is select the middle band. So just left click or select it over here, mid. And now I'm going to enlarge this plugin by just pressing enter. And we can really see what's going on here. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as I possibly can. This point here determines where the compression starts uh, in, in terms of volume. And this curve here determines how the compression acts, like how much compression, how much do you want to turn it down. You can left click and drag this point and move it up and down this curve. You want to keep it on the line and we're going to pick the right point to start the compression. So I'm going to press play and you'll see an input signal and we're going to pick the points where the S's are. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you. So you can see that normally the signal's just down here. But when the S's kick in, it goes all the way up to here. So I'm just going to drag this point all the way down to here. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you. After I've selected the point where compression starts, the threshold, I'm going to turn this all the way down and we're going to hear a lot of compression. So whenever the vocal goes above this point, we're just going to get a ton of compression. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. So that's a little bit too much compression. You might want to adjust this curve. You can make new points by right clicking and you can adjust these curve profiles and just get it sitting exactly the way you want. Now, the best thing to do with this is to listen to the whole track together and then just tweak this until it's perfect for you. But I would highly recommend with this plugin open, press enter, make it full screen and really get a lot of control over this graph. With all of these techniques, you don't wanna to do too much de-essing or it can sound like the singer has a sort of like a speech problem or a really sort of muffled high end. You just wanna try and get the right amount and often when dealing with these S's, it can fatigue your ears. So if you're feeling like that, just take a break and come back to it uh, in a few minutes time, you know, take a 10, 15 minute break, freshen up your ears a little bit. Right, the second technique uses the Edison, and this time we're gonna selectively remove only the S's that we wanna remove. So what you do is you just double click on your vocal, opens up like this, right click here and click edit in audio editor. 
This is what my vocal opens up as in the Edison. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. But we can't really tell from the waveform where the S's are, so what we're going to do is go up to this box here, select Spectrum View instead, and then to make it even easier, I'm going to go back into the View Modes here, Display Setting, and I'm going to select Natural Scale. Before I go any further, I'm just going to press Enter to enlarge this plugin to the full size, so you can really see what's going on. Now this plugin, along the bottom, left to right, we have Time, and bottom to top, we have low frequencies at the bottom, high frequencies at the top here. So we have all the harmonic content in these bars here. These are your singing notes going up and down. But at the top we have these S's, these sort of orange bars here, and we're going to remove these using the Edison. If I just quickly press play. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. So you can really hear problems on the S's and also on dancing just here. So what I'm going to do is focus on these last few sibilant sounds. There's the C here and the dancing here. So let's take a listen. All we see you dancing. All you have to do is just zoom in, just use the scroll wheel of your mouse, zoom in a little bit, left click and drag over the problem area, which is just there, and then hit this equalizer here. So if I just enlarge this, what we have is an EQ, low frequencies, high frequencies. And you can see that from about six or seven K to about 12 K, there's this problem area. So what I'm gonna do is just left click and I'm just going to pull this down, and that represents a duck in the frequency spectrum. Now we can select a mix amount for this, and we can preview what this is going to sound like. So if I have no mix, it's going to be quite sharp. All the mix, it's a lot more um, sort of uh, subdued. So I'm going to select somewhere in the middle, and then when I hit accept, you'll see that this area here will actually become uh, less bright. And now if I listen to that, it should be a little bit more pleasant. Oh, we see you dancing. So the first one's a little bit nicer. Not too much. I could have done more. And then what I'm going to do is select that letter there from dancing. And I'm going to do the same thing with the EQ. This time I'm going to mix in a little bit more. And let's take a listen to that. We see you dancing. That is a lot more pleasant. It doesn't click out of the speakers anymore, the headphones. And I'm going to do the same thing for that final word. Mix it in just a little bit less, and let's see how this end sounds. So I'm going to do a before and after comparison. So this is after. We see you dancing. Again. We see you dancing. And this is before. Oh, we see you dancing. Oh, we see you dancing. So it's just a lot more pleasant afterwards. That method does take an awful lot more time, but it's the only method I've found that really helps me get rid of really specific issues. The third and final technique uses a dynamic EQ. And what this means is that it acts like any other EQ, boosts or cuts frequencies, but it does it depending on the input signal. So when a certain band goes past a certain point, it will duck that band. So it's a little bit like a multiband compressor, sort of, but not really. So what I'm going to do is try to get this upper band from about 5k to 20k to just duck down like this only when the S sounds turn on, but I'm going to do it without any automation. It's going to automatically detect it. So what I'm going to do is just turn most of the bands off. If you're using the free version, you'll have a few less controls, but you can still do this absolutely perfectly well. And I'm going to turn input monitoring on here. So we'll, we will actually be able to see the frequencies here. If I press play. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. So we could clearly see that there was an issue between 5 and 20,000 hertz. So I'm going to turn the threshold on, and I'm going to lower the threshold a little bit. This threshold just lets the EQ know once the sound energy goes above that threshold, so once those S's are detected, start ducking that frequency down. So I'm just going to press play, and I'm going to adjust some settings. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. So what I did was lowered the Q factor to make it a steeper cut so that it didn't cut too much of the high-end frequencies out. And I adjusted the threshold until it was only really picking up on those sibilant sounds, the S sounds. So let's press play and you'll see and hear it ducking those frequencies. When I hear that song, the beat comes along, I always see you dancing. So it's probably a little bit too sensitive, so I could probably uh, increase my threshold or, or lower it so that it's less sensitive. That's the foundation of this technique, but you're really going to have to dig into the threshold, uh, the specific frequency and the Q factor to get a perfect result with your vocals. What I find is that absolutely every vocalist and microphone is different, so female vocals can tend to have those S sounds higher up. 
and also just due to the shape of someone's teeth, someone's mouth. Uh, some people can get really strange like whistling sounds and all sorts of stuff coming through and as an engineer or mixer it's your job to dive in and fix all these problems. So I hope this video has been helpful and I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.